All right, so that was one of the craziest first rounds from the Titans perspective that I've ever seen. Thank you to everyone who joined the live stream last night and make sure to tune in tonight as well. Me, Zach Easton, and Ryan will be streaming the second and third rounds where Tennessee has a lot more picks than we were expecting. And I will briefly give my thoughts on the trade itself before we get into Traylon Burks. So the fan part of me doesn't like the trade. AJ Brown is the best receiver in Titans history and probably my favorite Titans player of all time. But trying to take emotion out of it, I understand why they made this move. It seems like the two sides were pretty far apart in the contract negotiations, and AJ Brown is a great receiver, but his inability to stay healthy over the past two years is a legitimate concern. And so they saw the opportunity to get a first round pick and not have to pay 25 million to a receiver with injury issues. So in a vacuum, the trade makes sense to me. It's just kind of difficult to evaluate because I don't really know where the Titans think they are as an organization. I don't know if they view themselves as still being just a couple pieces away or if they saw the collapse in the playoffs and the arms race that's happening around the AFC and thought, okay, let's take a step back, try to maintain a competitive roster and find our next quarterback. I don't know that I've ever had less of a pulse on the Titans' direction under John Robinson, and so that makes evaluating a move like this really difficult because I just don't know what lens to view these moves through. I'll probably have a better take and more organized thoughts once we see the rest of the draft, but as of now at 5.37 a.m., those are my thoughts on the A.J. Brown trade. So Traylon Burks was the 21st ranked player on the consensus board, which basically aggregates all of the big boards into one. I had Burks at 40 on my board, so picking him at 18 is to me a slight reach, but I don't think it's some egregious overdraft. I don't personally view Traylon Burks as a first round talent, but he's close enough to that range that I'm okay with the pick, especially considering how quickly the receivers were flying off the board and the fact that this receiver class dries up pretty fast in my opinion. The options that Tennessee was gonna have at 26 were extremely underwhelming. And so even though I'm lower on Burks than most people, I'm happy to be making a video on him instead of Tyler Smith or Trevor Penning. Burks is six foot two, 225 pounds with 33 and a half inch arms and almost 10 inch hands. And his combine performance was a disappointment to a lot of people. He ran a slower 40 than most people expected, but the 455 doesn't really bother me. He has tape against high end SEC competition where he's the fastest guy on the field. And while a 455 isn't great, it would still check the box considering how he moves in game. I do have concerns about his other testing numbers, specifically the agility drills, because my main issue with Traylon Burks as a prospect is that I thought he was a noticeably stiff route runner, and the 9th percentile 3 cone and 15th percentile shuttle back up the athletic limitations that I saw on tape. On top of not being the most fluid athlete, his technique is inconsistent, and so his route breaks were rounded and drawn out, and he just really struggled to create horizontal separation over the middle of the field. Burks had an 82% success rate against zone coverage, but only a 58% success rate against man. And regardless of which metric you look at, you get essentially the same split. He was way less effective against man coverage than he was against zone coverage. He also ran a very limited route tree with a lot of schemed up touches that got the ball in his hands without requiring that he get open or actually win against coverage. 18% of Burks' career targets came when he was in motion pre-snap and he was the only wide receiver in the consensus top 20 of this draft whose most commonly run route was a screen. So he has limited experience running an NFL route tree and he wasn't particularly effective at creating separation when he did run more advanced routes. And that's why I never really saw the AJ Brown comparisons because when you look at what AJ Brown can do on the outside against man coverage, he's just in a completely different league than Traylon Burks. AJ Brown's best skill, in my opinion, is his body control through the process of the route. He has this ability to lean so much of his weight into the defensive back and then explode in the other direction. And Traylon Burks really doesn't have that skill set. So to me, they just like on film look like two completely different players. Um, the comp never really made sense to me. Um, Burks also doesn't have much experience playing on the outside as an X. Only 18.4% of offensive snaps were on the outside, and he only had 39 snaps against press coverage in 2021. So again, you're working off of an incredibly small sample size when you're trying to project him making the transition to X receiver. 
I actually thought that from the limited sample size in press coverage, Burks did show some nice flashes. Uh, he uses his length very effectively at the line of scrimmage, but his footwork is still a major work in progress. I will say he fixed a lot of his technique issues as the season progressed, and anytime you can notice a player developing and improving their technique in real time, that's a major green flag from the standpoint of projecting them to the NFL, because for one, it shows that they have work ethic and coachability and all that, but it's also just the subconscious effect of actually seeing a player fix something that's wrong with their game, where now if I notice another problem, I sort of frame it in my mind as something they need to fix, as opposed to an immutable flaw. So I wanna look at this week four play against Texas A&M, which is a great encapsulation of Traylon Burks releasing against press because the technique isn't great, but he's just so physically dominant that he wins anyways. This is called a blade release or a two-step release. Very self-explanatory, it's just one, two, and go. And an issue that a lot of receivers have, including Traylon Burks, is that they'll have a drop step with their back foot where they pick it up right before they start the release and that inhibits your ability to accelerate out of your stance, but it also throws off the timing and sequencing of your steps. On a blade release, you're trying to get low, take the first step outside, cross the defender's face, and then explode out of that second rocker step. But if we go back to Burks, his footwork is thrown off from the start of the play. Both of his steps land simultaneously, and so he doesn't put himself in a good position to accelerate outside. But because he has such great length, and he's really good at using this wipe technique to shield off contact, he's able to build up speed and win down the field. Right here, he's doing a three-step release, which is the same thing with an extra step, but there's no lateral movement. Instead of crossing the face, he just takes all three steps in the same spot, but then he's able to power down the line and make a nice catch. Now, this play from Missouri, I really like. I think this is how Traylon Burks can win at the line of scrimmage in the NFL. Every other time Burks used the three-step, he did what's called a quick three, where you're just trying to foot fire the corner and blaze past him, but that's not trail on Burks. He's not the shifty receiver that can be successful dancing around at the line of scrimmage. So instead of the quick three right here, he does the hesitation three, which is just a little bit more drawn out version where you start off a little slower and then you're really trying to accelerate the last two steps. And this is just a way more natural and effective style of release for trail on Burks because first of all, by slowing everything down 10%, he can make sure his footwork is clean. Watch how good this third step is. His base is so wide and low that he's able to plant the outside foot really hard and then explode inside. And then he does a great job using his length. So we've got one, two, three, accelerate out of the third step. And then he leads with the outside arm because once his arm is past the inside shoulder, he can wipe and then you're pretty much pinned to the outside. So as the season went on, I was impressed by the development that I saw from Traylon Burks in certain areas. I thought that he improved his footwork at the line of scrimmage, and I also thought that he did a better job blending different parts of his routes together. He does a nice job using a pressure step right here, where he stems his route towards the defender's opposite shoulder, breaks in the opposite direction. The first couple games I watched of him, his routes were a lot more segmented than they were later in the season. He also has outstanding ball skills, great contested catch receiver, and one of the best receivers after the catch in the entire class. So I know I was very critical of Traylon Burks in this video, but if I'm lower on a player than everyone else, I wanna make sure that I'm thorough in explaining why that is. Overall, Traylon Burks has everything that you look for in terms of size, speed, length, and ball skills. But on day one, I'm just not confident in his ability to get open effectively in the NFL. The important thing to remember though about the draft is that players improve and teams bet on traits and what someone can be a lot more than they value what a player is right now. For my grade, and this is not including the AJ Brown trade, just pick 18, trail on Burks, I'm gonna go C plus. And C plus seems a little generous for taking my 40th ranked player at 18, but when I think about who was on the board at the time, the only player I would have preferred for Tennessee is Sky Moore. I just don't think that there were a lot of great options, um, especially when their biggest needs are receiver and tackle, and both of those positions were flying off the board. So I don't love the pick, but I'm good with the decision. Thanks for watching, and thank you so much to everyone on Patreon who makes this video possible. I'm going to be breaking down every Titans draft pick, so make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Also, don't forget to come watch the second and third round with us on the channel tonight.